Come on, pup. Come on. Lizzie says I shouldn't be wasting t so much time. And that means that things like this have got really thick ice on them now. So you see this foot here? It's obviously some sort of infection in here. Good morning, sheep fans. Cammy's the name. Sheep's the game, as always. Today, we are getting some of my mule ewes in. We have a 200 mob here. They're split 100 and 100. Can you hear that snow? I am using my Rode Wireless Go mic. Hopefully this is working okay. My first time using it for a vlog. Just means I don't have the big hairy mic on top of the camera. Makes it a lot lighter and easier to use. It also means that I can attach the GoPro to things like that fence and you can still hear me as if I was right next to it. Fantastic. So I was saying, oh, dogs are giving a fair charge. Come on you, come on dogs, that's not, we're not getting them. That's <laughs> wee fern, look, the wee pup. Come on pup, come on. Sky will bite you. All good fun today, the weather's good. Everyone is in good spirits. If you're a sheep fan and you're new to the channel, then make sure to click the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, drop me a little comment, all helps the channel, you regular guys. Keep leaving your comments, I really appreciate it. Love the interaction. So why are we bringing these sheep in today? Well, I was around them the last couple of days and I'm noticing that there are a few sore feet occurring now. And I want to get them in and get that on top of that. Because certainly at least two have seen what looks like it's a bit of foot rot. And a couple of things that might start spreading about. And also the sheep's gonna be in a bit of pain and she'll start going backwards there in terms of condition, when really you want her staying steady or moving forward with these lambs growing inside of her. I was going to put my drone up, but I forgot the drone, so... Lizzie, Lizzie says I shouldn't be wasting so much time. And she's absolutely right, but I'm going to nip home and get the drone. Because it's going to be good shots, it's a lovely day. You don't get many in Scotland. So we've got the, the drone here with us, as you can see it's up there, it's actually just following me, I don't know, can I get it in the screen here? See it there? It just follows me around, how cool is that? So yeah, the drone's just following me just now, I think I've got it actually rotating round about me, just to be really confusing. So anyway, it's good fun just playing with the drone. So the sheep, mostly mule ewes, which of course is a blackface mother and a blue faced Lester father. That's the main kind of sheep I run. Hopefully Lizzie can get this gate here okay. Frozen a wee bit in the ground, she might need a hand, it's actually pretty buried. You're not gonna get that, are you? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, hang on. Hey, hey, no, give me that. Come on. Nah, that's solid. Right, let's put him through this gate. I forget, I've got that new microphone on now, so like, oh, oh this one's solid too. So I've got this new microphone on, so it'll be like really clear audio, even away over there. How great is that? Oh, the sheep are getting away! You ready, Meg? See? Ready, set, we. When you are working with in lamb ewes, you should always try and give them as much time as possible, especially when working with the dog, which is why I was just trying to keep Meg back a little bit there and let them stroll over at their own pace. However, full disclosure, I did tell Lizzie to let little Fern go and see what she did. Now, I would never usually recommend letting a young pup go with in lamb ewes, however, at this point in time, Fern was still very young and not fast enough to really cause any issues. 
so it was great to see her so keen to work, even if she was pushing the sheep in the wrong direction. So that's the sheep in, some great footage there, absolutely love that and the wee pup, Fern, is so desperate to work, it's exciting. So they're in, they're standing behind me here, there's actually two lots, as I said, they're split in half. This is the worst, I haven't actually seen really many sore feet in the other lot, but we're at it today, we'll get them in and get them through the foot bath. Some formalin, we'll show you that in a second, but after such hard work there, I'm going to let them stand for a second and we're going to get some lunch. So first part of the process is this foot bath, getting this prepared, now this is absolutely solid, it's been, this isn't, this, this isn't good, so it's been incredibly cold recently and steady, not incredibly cold but it's steady below zero and that means that things like this have got really thick ice on them now, I've actually seen kids out playing ice hockey which is very unusual in Scotland, so my first job is going to be thaw this out. This is just actually rainwater, we scraped this out last day, we used it, so it just kind of shows you the level of rainwater we've had since then, it's actually not too bad, but, hmm, how am I going to thaw this out? First job I think we'll do, we'll formalin thaw it out, let's put a splash of formalin on it, see what that does. You're awkward if that freezes too. Hi, right, going to get a splash. Well, that's empty, that's empty. Hey. Okay, so burning fuel on top of ice doesn't really work. We kind of knew that because it just burns away the fuel at the top, it doesn't actually really do anything else. But I thought it'd be good fun to do. Don't use as much fuel if you're going to try it yourself. In fact, just don't try it yourself. Let me do it for you. Okay, okay, I hear you. The foot bathing has just turned into an absolute disaster. What we should do is really get some rock salt or de-icing salt and get that in there to get it thrown out. 
have a look at my ears, see what you think. I'm quite pleased with them. Hi, Jin. Hi, Jin. So we've got a fraction too many sheep in here. Because I just want to really look and see for anything limping bad. I didn't see any in this first lot, and the ones that I'm looking for I know are pretty obvious. We need the top, the top out of here, this boy. Another good thing is, you remember from a previous video, I put raddle, green raddle on him, and I have not seen any sheep with green raddle on their bums yet. Because I mean, there's ones there with like a wee scuff, but I don't think that'll be anything. That'll be him just trying to get his end away, even though nobody wants it. I know how he feels. So we're just walking around, taking our time. Just see if we see anything sore feet. much nicer that was a you may or may not i don't think i did a video actually there's a, a selection of gimmers that i show late on and you see the difference how much nicer they are that was shown in september just what a difference these sheep just have a little bit too much wool and it can be deceptive with regards to their condition although they do look quite good right run some up here and we'll get the top shed off oh man Go about that. Just get a hand on these sheep. Tremendous. 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 Stop it. Oh, we, no, she's tremendous. I mean, that's just flat, flat back. That's a top. She's a wee bit leaner. Wee gimmer. She's she'll be a gimmer that lambed as a hog. Just a bit of a harder time of it, but she's not in bad condition. Really enjoyable when you're sheep like this, really enjoyable. So you see this one here? There's a wee bit of tenderness in this front right, but the worst one is the back right. So I'm just, I'm not going to hack in too deep. Just, just trim a wee bit here. There's nothing really compacted in there and what I'm going to do if I cut too deep I'm just going to make it bleed. Make it sore than it already is so I'm not going to hack away at that. I'll just square these off. It's just maybe just one of these sheep's just bad at her feet. This is the, this is the problem foot here. Lizzie will let you get a look at that when she comes in. I'll just give her a wee jag antibiotics just now, there's about a foot rot at the back one there. So you can see this foot here. Clearly get signs of rot in there. So we'll just trim off the, the loose the loose stuff at the side, won't go too deep with it. Try and be sensitive, she's obviously feeling that a bit painful. Sorry, lass. So she's almost going like a weak abscess here. So I'm not going to hack in too far and have her bleeding. She's opened up enough there. Of course the antibiotics should do a job. She's had a jag. I would usually always spray a foot like this with some antibiotic spray. However, when we went to get the spray, we realised that we'd used it all the last day we were sorting feet and had none available. And with this being a weekend, there was no way to get some more for this job. Therefore, the sheep just had our injection of antibiotics and she was left to run on. In an ideal world, you'd be looking to isolate this sheep and keep her away from the rest of the flock to avoid the bacteria spreading to other sheep. However, that wasn't so easy for me in this situation. So the course of antibiotics and back out to the field was the result here. I can confirm this was filmed a couple of weeks ago and the sheep is now back to full health. And we'll just put a wee spray on her back right again so we know she's been done. Oh, lass. Let her go. 
you can see she's not she's not walking too badly on that which makes it kind of hard to spot just let those two go, it's alright if I let them all go So, we're just going to work away like that for a few and we'll let you see if there's any highlights. So this is the main cause for concern. The sheep I saw that was particularly bad. I'll show you her here. Looks like a bit of CODD. So that is a really painful looking foot, so we'll get a look at this just now. So you see this foot here, it's obviously some sort of infection in here. It is entirely possible that this has been a thorn or something that's got in here and got this infected. I mean, it's quite pungent. But there is also the case that it could just be a case of CODD, which is highly infectious and it's not a good thing to have in your sheep. We'll trim, she's not been using this foot. So that's why it's now become really overgrown. So we'll just trim a wee bit back, just to try and help her out a bit, so that when the foot recovers, and she does get back to using it, then she doesn't have this problem with too much horn on it. And this whole foot is pretty big. So that's what you don't want to happen, you don't want to start cu cutting into the good flesh and causing her to bleed. Of course accidents do happen, like, like happened there. You can catch it, it's easy done. I'm just trying to take some extra horn off that's grown. I can see that it's loose. You're right lass, you feel the better of this. Not immediately you won't, but you will once you get a wee jag antibiotics. So that's opened it up a bit. Now she'll get some antibiotics, some blue spray. First of all, that's an antibiotic spray. Now, trimming sheep's feet is a major talking point among sheep farmers, but current veterinary guidance says that you should not trim a foot like this. Instead, you should treat it with a course of antibiotics as directed by your vet and apply some topical antibiotic spray like this one I am applying here just now. In my head, it makes sense to trim this foot because she's going on soft ground and that long nail is just going to be there covering up this wound and not letting it heal properly. However, the evidence and the studies done by medical professionals suggest it's the wrong thing to do. And I think it's important on this channel that I do things properly. So I've left this on here essentially to show that trimming sheep's feet like this is outdated and with a foot like this, treat the sheep with antibiotics, apply a spray and let her heal and the nail should come right itself and don't be tempted to trim it as I have done. It's very helpful because the risk is when she goes in the foot bath she's probably not going to put that foot down, especially now I've been playing about with it. So it's an antibiotic spray that you get off the vet. And give her some antibiotics here under the skin. Right, set up last. So she's the main one that I'd seen. 
you can see she's very sore in that foot so that was one that was a priority to get in and get done and the rest if any that are limping will probably be pretty similar pretty simple jobs i don't think there'll be any as exciting that so we'll rattle on through it here's a quick look at that sheep three weeks later and as you can see her front left is completely healed but she's now going slightly lame on her front right so we'll need to get a look at that next time she's in so that was the main one i wanted to show you guys getting done everything else that's going to be done in this lot is pretty minor in fact i'll probably if i see any Unless it's an infection, they'll just begin running through the foot bath and getting done that way. Let's get this job done and get these back out to the field. So they're done. This is only half of them. To be fair, these were the ones that actually had the sore feet. The other ones look all right. I was just going to run them through the foot bath as well. Just as a precaution and because I had some time today. But the foot bath being the way it is, I'm not going to bother now. Absolute waste of time until that thaws out. Or until we get some salt and get into it properly. So, that's the end of this vlog guys. Hope it's been another interesting one. We had a bit of fun. The drone footage looked amazing when I was recording it, so hopefully it comes out amazing too. And I hope you click subscribe, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you for the next one. Hey. Hey, fun, good girl. Hey, good girl. Hey, hey, good girl. Hey, fun. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Fun. Fun. Hey, fun, that'll do. Fun, hey fun, fun, fun. You fun, fun, fun. Okay. That will do.